Hey, what's up, guys? This is Andrew from 3DDC. And if you remember last video, I made a template for the Raspberry Pi. Well, in this video, I'm actually going to make an entire enclosure. So to do that, I went to Onshape Public Documents, and I just searched for a model of the Raspberry Pi 2, Model B, and I found this guy right here. I'm going to use this to make my enclosure. So to start off, what I'm going to do is just kind of delete some components I don't need. So that's like this component IC1, I don't need that so I can delete it, I don't need this so I can delete it, and this ARM processor I don't need it either so I can delete it. Okay, Everything else I need. So I'm going to merge that all together to get one piece, so I'm going to go up here to Boolean, and I'll make sure Union is selected, and I'm just going to select everything in order for that all to become one piece. Okay. Okay, and I also forgot to delete one of those. So I don't need that, so I just delete it. Everything else, that's all we need to, in order to create cutouts and everything. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is actually, I don't need that anymore, right now anyway, so I'm just going to hide it. And I'm basically going to do the same concept I did last time. So I'm going to pull up a sketch, or I'm going to make a sketch on the top plane. Start off with a center rectangle. Make it 85 by 56, just like last time. So add dimensions, 85 by 56. Okay, but I actually don't need to add uh, standoffs or anything like that yet, so all I'm going to do is offset this by pressing O, because I want a little more room in the case for the Raspberry Pi, but I don't need it to be 5 millimeters. Probably, I think I'm just going to do 3 millimeters because I want to give 1.6 millimeter walls. I'll give it 1.4 millimeters of space. That'll be enough space, it, but I want it to be kind of a tight fit. So that's good there. Now I'm going to press Shift plus E to extrude this. Okay, and I'm going to extrude it 23 millimeters. That means each half is going to be 11.5 millimeters tall. Okay, so now I have one piece. Now what I need to do is split this in half to have a top and bottom part of the enclosure. In order to do that, I want to use the top plane to split the entity, but I need to move that down in order for the top plane to be uh, in the center. So I'm going to go over here to transform, and I'm going to select this part, and I'm going to translate by X, Y, Z, and I'm going to move it down on the Z axis, minus 11.5, because half of 23 is 11.5. So that means it's halfway, so the top part splits it in half. Now I'm going to go up here to split part. I'm going to select that part, and then I'm going to select the entity split with is going to be the top plane. So now I have two parts. Okay, so this part down here, this part that's showing, part two, that's going to be the bottom, so I'm going to rename it bottom. Okay, and then I'm going to hide that, and this top part is of course going to be the top, so I'm going to rename it the top. Okay, but right now I'm just going to mess with the bottom half. So what I'm going to do is go to that top face and I'm going to shell it out. I'm going to give it 1.6 millimeter walls. Okay. And now I can create standoffs. So what I'm going to do is create a sketch on the face of this shell. And I'm going to make a center rectangle. That's 85 by 56. by 56. Okay, now I can create circles. And when I actually go to make the standoff, if I just went off this picture and made the standoffs on the left where the Ethernet and everything is on the right, well, you see that wouldn't really match up with the PCB I have. So I need to do it oppositely. I need to have the standoffs on the right and the Ethernet and USB ports on the left. So I'm going to kind of do this in reverse. So I'm going to make a circle over here. And you may remember last time I gave the circles the diameter 2.5. actually found it was better to make them 2.4 millimeters. They just fit a little bit better. Okay, and then from here to here it needs to be 3.5 just like last time. And from here to here it needs to be also 3.5. 
Okay, I'm now going to offset this. And again, this is going to be the peg, and the offset is going to be its standoff. So I'm just going to offset it by 2 millimeters. Okay, cool. Now I can come over here and press C on my keyboard again to create a circle. I'm going to give it a diameter of 2.4. Okay, and then from here to here, so it needs to be 3.5. And then from here to here needs to be 58 millimeters. And of course, it's going to move this one because this one is already constrained. It's going to move that one back, and I'm going to offset that one by 2 millimeters. Uh, let's see. Press O for offset. I'm going to click on that and make the offset 2 millimeters. Okay, now I can mirror that. So I'm going to select the mirror line. It's going to be the x axis. The entities to be mirrored are going to be the standoffs and the pegs, or what the standoffs and pegs will be made from, the sketches that they'll be made from. Okay, so that's good for that sketch. Now I'm going to go and extrude. So First thing I'm going to do is select just the standoffs. And I want to extrude those by just 2 millimeters, so they'll stick 2 millimeters out. Okay, that's good. And now I want to make the pegs, so I need to show that sketch again. And I'm going to select the sketches that the pegs will be made from. Okay, and then I will need to press Shift plus E to extrude those pegs, make sure I have everything selected, and I want them to stick out of the case a little bit, so I'm going to do 12 millimeters, and see what that looks like. It's sticking out of the case a little bit, that looks good. Okay, now I'm press OK there, and that's it. So the reason I want those to stick out of the case is because on the top half, I'm actually going to have receptacles that goes into, so I don't have to screw the two halves together. So this isn't just holding the board in, the pegs are actually holding the two halves together also. Okay, so now that's good for the bottom half, so I'm going to hide it, and I'm going to the top half. Now I'm going to mess with the top half, and I need to shell it out first. And I'm going to go ahead and hide that sketch, because we don't really need it right now. Okay, so I'm going to go to the bottom, and I want to make sure to shell this, give it 1.6 million walls, just like the last one. Okay, call that good. And now I'm going to create a sketch on the face of that shell, so I'm sketch, and the sketch plane is going to be the face of that shell too. And I'm going to create a center rectangle, that's of course 85 by 56, just like the last one. 85 56 okay now I can create circles okay and it, these are gonna be holes I'm calling them receptacles for those pegs to slide into so it needs to be bigger than the peg to allow some room for clearance so the pegs were 2.4 I'm gonna make these three millimeters that give me 0.6 millimeters of clearance okay and from here to here, needs to be 3.5 and from here to here needs to be 3.5 and then I'm going to offset that by we'll do 1.5 millimeters okay I'm gonna do the same thing over here so I'm gonna create a circle that's three millimeters in diameter and it needs to be 3.5 from the top and again 58 from circle to circle and then I'm going to offset it by 1.5 millimeters and I'm going to mirror it OK, 
Okay, so that's it for that sketch. Again, this is going to be a hole, and this will be surrounding the hole. So what I'm going to do now is press Shift plus E on my keyboard to extrude. And I need to select the receptacles, the sketches that the receptacles will be made from. I think I missed the selection over there. Okay, so since the pegs stuck out a little bit, I think I'm going to make these uh, stick in a little bit. I'm going to try a 10 and see what that looks like. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go with 11. We'll try 10.5. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stick with 10. I think that was the best bet. Okay. <clears throat> so now I have receptacles for the pegs to slide into. So if I show these two halves, you can't see inside there, but they would line up perfectly because the pegs would go into the receptacles. So, of course, the next step, and I'm going to make this a two-part video, so the next part of this video, we'll be making the cutouts using this Raspberry Pi. So uh, drop a like if you liked it, subscribe, comment. Uh, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next video.